<laughs> All right. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Willow's Moth Nursery. Today, I have a huge update to tell you guys all about there's a moth. That is marmalade. There is another moth. I am going to point this to the stick. Do you see the moth? I'm going to give you a couple seconds to try and find the moth in this image. Did you see him yet? He's camouflaged all the way on the absolute tip of the log right there. Whew. I'm out of breath just holding the camera. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, there we go. There he is right on the side. You can see that dark circle. That is his eye. The woolly bears are doing finely and I bought this lid. It's like it should go under flowers and flower pots but it fits perfectly the moth nursery. So it's gonna be the lid for the not moth nursery. Today, I had a huge problem. A lot happened today. Lots of chrysalises I'm gonna show you. Sort all sorts of stuff. A lot of bad things happened lately. You probably noticed I had a lack of moth nursery videos. And that is because I needed to find the time to fix some sort of famine and disease and gross awfulness that happens. I made videos explaining that when you do this sort of thing, it's not that easy. It's stinky, it's <laughs> gross, it's a lot of trial and error and disease and gross things will happen. So what I am going to tell you about is <laughs> this had a lot of bad things happening lately. I had to give them new soil. I had to put growing plants in here. You can see that there's grass clumps different mosses. I gave them lettuces um, and dandelion greens and grasses and stuff. I had to completely have a new system. I bought the other day this little beaker for like keeping one flower alive. I think that might be what it's for. But I saw these. They had a little rubber top with a hole in it to stick like a flower stem or something. And I thought it would be the perfect little beaker to put the nectar in because the moths have been getting sick. The caterpillars track lots of mud and dirt into the food that the moths eat as well. So it has been having lots of gross issues with it. And I needed to keep the nectar away from any caterpillars walking on it so that it's higher up and the moths can drink from it from the very top. So I have their very sugary water in there. And without further ado, while I was cleaning this, I was exploring a lot of new options. I gave them new bark options, new sticks, lots of things for them to do. I noticed Ula also is doing extremely well today. I have these two containers here. This houses Ula. It has lace because she's soon to hatch and she needs to climb up something if I am not there to help her. She has full patterns, it seems, on her back and wings. She has little spots on her back, which I will show you. Oh, Ula, come here. I'm so sorry. She has little spots on her back, which the hawk moth has. You can see those little focus. You can see those little yellow splotches down her back in every segment. And her wings are chock full of, you can see it much better when it's wet chock full of dark zigzags and spots and beautiful things. Ula is very, very soon to hatch, so I've been watching her all day. All right, but while I was cleaning and giving them new soil, one of the other hornworms turned into this chunky, cute other chrysalis. This is the second one. And he has a missing leg, it seems. Very, very soft. He just turned, I think. So I have to make sure not to touch him until he hardens so much more. Oh my gosh, my voice is, must be disturbing him. I'm so sorry, sweetheart. But he's in there. And you can see the difference in color. This one's more greenish, light brown. I'm going to lower my voice before putting this back on. He um, is very, very new. And I am so excited to have two of them. I am so excited to have two chrysalises of the Manduka moth. Because I am so hoping 
that I can get some to breed because when you buy them from breeders online or at the pet stores and stuff, sometimes they are so unhealthy that you just cannot get a batch to live. I have suffered with that for a while. I need the survival of the fittest, my two Manduka moths that turn into moths to make babies so that those babies are stronger and healthier and have a higher chance of surviving. Because I know how to take care of them well enough that I am confident with it. And I would feed them natural things, give them natural bark and soils, and feed them organic foods. And I am confident that if they, those two Manduka moths um, reproduce, have eggs and such, that I will have a lot better of a time <laughs> with my batch. So, the woolies are doing okay. I have a pile, you cannot see it. But I had a bunch of new chrysalises that I found. In fact, another, a fourth chrysalis of what looked like a yellow woolly bear or a woolly bear. One of them made another chrysalis. So I have four woolly caterpillar chrysalises, one little chrysalis that has like a banded pattern, and another little tiny chrysalis that could be a cabbage worm, could be some kind of really small moth. That in the center is a very dirty, dirty hornworm who is ready to pupate. So I'm keeping him there to watch him and see if he turns into a third chrysalis. Keep your, keep your wishes, wishes nice. The moth has emerged. <laughs> you can see a little moth there. That's the happy moth. They are feeling so much better. They smell, their environment smells so much better after I did this. It was not doing very well. It is trial and error, and I have finally moved the moth food into a beaker standing up so that things don't get gross and rotty and awful smelling and sick. I'm sick of that. I'm done with that. So they need to be healthy. <laughs> so anyways, and I have this for some airflow. Of course, I open this all the time, but it has a little dangly lace so that the moths can also hide in there. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know what you think of these little ideas. Um, if you also raise hornworms and other moths and caterpillars, maybe you'll find some of these little tips useful, some of my stories. I'm growing some actually living plants in here so that they can both eat it and it creates an environment so that it takes stuff from the soil. The worst thing you can have, I think, in an insect environment is stagnation. You have to replicate nature as much as possible, mist it for rain, but not too much. Too much moisture will rot and mold and make it a very unhealthy space. So I have luckily saved a lot of caterpillars that are very happy. And he, they, they're loving the grass that is now in there growing. They are loving it. He's climbing all over. It is like, they, they're so happy. And I now put them in the window more so that they have sunlight. <laughs> of course, I closed it because I don't want to record out the window. But wish them luck. Have an amazing day. And check out some of my other videos. Have an awesome day. Bye, everybody.